Thank you, Colin. And thank you for everyone that has joined our webinar today. As Colin mentioned, we're going to be discussing how to really report and measure around remote worker productivity and their overall experience working on Citrix or VMware Horizon. With me, we have Yemi Ladyju, who's our senior technical consultant. He's going to be walking through some of the reports, show you how easy it is to generate these reports, and also give you a glimpse into our software that can help you troubleshoot when issues do arise. As Colin shared, my name is Stacey Leibwinger and I'm with the marketing team here. And so before we totally jump in, I do wanna do some housekeeping. So in terms of today's agenda, we're gonna talk about some of the challenges that occur when many of you have probably been asked by your management team or maybe you're the ones asking or your business partner going, now that everyone's gonna be working from home for the indefinite future, how do we know that they have the right tools, access to the right applications, the right experience to be productive? And are they being productive? Are there things we can do to improve that experience? So we're gonna talk about why those questions are so hard to answer, and then give you insights on how to answer those questions, as well as ensure that you provide them a seamless user experience, showing off some of the Goliath technology. As Colin said, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box. We will try to answer them throughout, or we'll get to them at the end. And one question we're always asked, will this recording be available? Yes, within 24 hours, you'll have a copy of this recording in your inbox, so you can go back and review or even share with any of your colleagues that might be interested. Let's go ahead and get started. First, before we jump in, I did wanna give just a brief overview of who Goliath is. So at Goliath, we offer software that has embedded intelligence and automation that allows you to monitor and troubleshoot end user experience issues across Citrix, VMware Horizon, regardless of where users are located or their workloads are located. And I talked about that embedded intelligence and automation. Why that's so important is what our technology does is it automatically discovers the entire IT infrastructure. We then go ahead and identify what to monitor. We then show how to monitor it, and then we alert you anytime any thresholds are exceeded using best practices from Microsoft, Citrix, VMware, our own knowledge over the last 10 years that we've been working with clients. It's because of that core capabilities that if you talk to any single logo on this slide, they'll tell you that by leveraging Goliath's technology, it has the operational impact of hiring two to three full-time troubleshooting experts to their staff. You can also see that we have scaled up to support some of the largest organizations and Citrix infrastructures like a Bell Canada, a Xerox, but we have an ease of use and price profile that allows us to, small, to scale down to small to medium sized businesses. And the final takeaway, I see we have some health systems on the phone today, is we are known as the health IT standard in the area. The reason we're known for that is we have business and technical relationships with all major EMR, EHR vendors, that's Fitch, Cerner, Epic, Allscripts, Meditech. So we have purpose-built modules for health systems that give them an entire overview of their user experience from the user behavior to their internal infrastructures all the way through the EHR system. And that's who Goliath is. So let's talk about why organizations leverage Goliath and other tools, especially when it comes to reporting on end user experience and productivity. I'm sure many of you are getting these questions and have gotten them over the last six to seven months. Maybe some you've learned the answer, maybe some you're just looking for better answers, but people really wanna know, now that I can't see my employees working, what is the experience like when they're working from home? Are they as productive? Do they have access to the right tools? When performance issues come up, are we fixing them? Do we know if they have performance issues? I'm sure many of you have done surveys now asking about your remote workers. What's their experience been? Unfortunately, some of those responses probably surprised you, right? Everyone says it's great until they have a question in front of them and they go, you know what? It's actually been rather slow. This has been a problem. Because of Teams or because of Zoom meetings, my performance has really degraded over time. The challenge is, is you don't even know half the problems they have because they don't offer that information up to you. And when you do get these questions or have these questions, one of the reasons it's so hard to answer them is in order to deliver end user experience, if you're using a Citrix or a VMware Horizon, is that it takes up to 15 different technologies, all with unique elements to deliver that experience. 
you probably know this intuitively, but your management may not, or those above them may not. So they don't understand why is it so hard to answer these questions? Well, the reason is every one of your users is unique. And then each of their interaction points is unique if they're working from home, how they connect to the internet, the quality of their ISP, the endpoint that they're leveraging. So even before you get to the infrastructure, you have a very unique user experience occurring. Then you have all of the elements that make up your data center, all the elements that are surfacing, for example, Citrix with NetScale, NetScaler Gateway, storefront services, broker services. You have your applications of your healthcare, you have your EHR applications. You have your backend systems from licensing server, profile, active directory, and then you have your whole hypervisor host layer. And if you're like many of our clients, some or all of these elements are in the cloud and some are on premises. So you have a very hybrid environment that you're trying to keep a good eye on. And it makes it really hard to identify why issues occur and also report on that experience overall. And so when we talk about reporting, what you really need is that single view that provides end-to-end -end visibility across your entire experience, factoring in the endpoint, factoring in what applications does someone have running? Do they have something running in the background? Do they have a large print job going on? Looking at their connection speed. Then you need to look at every element in the delivery infrastructure from Citrix, Horizon, Microsoft, iGel. And then if you are in healthcare, thinking about your EHR application. And so you really truly need that single pane of glass that allows you to see all of these IT elements together so that you can report on it you can document what's going on. And when issues do arise, you can go in ahead and address those issues. And this is really, again, I keep saying this because we've got some health systems on the line. This is where our purpose-built modules come into play, absolutely in healthcare. And so that we can go ahead and actually understand the experience, not only because of the infrastructure, but because of those EHR applications. In addition to having that single view, the other piece of elements that you need is really tools that have embedded intelligence and automation built within. If you had the time, you could probably go mine this data. You could report on this data, but often you don't have the time. And in some cases, you might not even have the skill sets to go in the deep guts of a Citrix or Horizon environment. And so we often say where we focus a lot of our intelligence is around the areas that people want to report on and alert on most often, which is where issues occur at looking at logon initiation, logon duration, session performance. So this is just a sample of the elements that we are proactively monitoring, setting thresholds for, and even have self-healing capabilities to resolve when issues do arise. So when it comes all together, we talk about reporting, which is our focus today. We really think about reporting, not from an out-of-the-box reports, we're gonna show you those, but a data perspective. And how, as IT administrators, do you get your hands on the data and the visibility you need so you can share that information easily with your colleagues in other cross-functional departments, with end users, with management, so that you can really identify what that experience of productivity levels are. So when you're looking at data, you want to be able to share that, whether it's PDF, Excel, CSV, you want to be able to email it, you want to be able to print it. The other piece of data is integration. We want you to be able to take this information and route it through the appropriate system and to the appropriate people that are in your organization. So if you're using, for example, a ServiceNow or a Remedy as your ticketing system, you should be able to take those alerts, automatically route them to the help desk, give them information to either automatically rectify or details on how to rectify an issue should it happen. Similarly, if you're using other um, tools like a Splunk or others that are capturing information about the infrastructure, you want to be able to integrate that data with information about the user experience so you get a more holistic view. And finally, you do want to be able to enhance it with out-of-the-box reports. And that's what Yemi's going to walk through right now, which is with the Goliath, we have a number of reports pre-built so that you can leverage that in your conversation. We also allow you to visualize that information in third-party tools like a Power BI and a Tableau. Often we're working with many customers. We have a healthcare client right now where they have specific SLAs. They need to make sure that their login times are consistently under 30 seconds and their reconnects are under 10 seconds. They leverage our report so that they can confirm to management that they are hitting these metrics even as people start working from home. 
Yemi, do you want to talk a little bit more about the type of out-of-the-box reports we have and then share with everyone today what those look like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if we when we talk about data and the reports that we have coming um, out of the box, as Stacy mentioned, you really can break them down into um, a number of different categories that we see here on the screen. Number one, of course, is uh, end user activity. As users are starting to work from home, as users are starting to um, you know, deviate from the standard, you know, working at the office sort of um, uh, workspace. Um, it's important for IT to understand uh, the activity of the environment, to understand how users are working, and so they can use this information to determine how to better support these users. So we have our productivity report that breaks down the individual users and their sessions. It also breaks down how active they are inside of their sessions and giving you details into their productivity. Um, peak usage reports to understand scaling, sizing, as well as licensing, uh, you know, of course, what applications that are being used and things like that as well. Um, so in conjunction with the activity reports, we then have performance reports. These are specific to the experience of the users while they are accessing or um, trying to access the environment. So we have an end user experience report that is, of course, very a high level breaking down overall end user experience in the environment, taking into consideration all of the other reports that are uh, below that. So log on duration, latency, connection speed, environment summary, those sort of things. Um, and then finally, we have uh, system performance, which is focused, of course, on the back end elements that are supporting the users in a virtualization environment. So whether that's VMware Horizon or Citrix, um, you're able to get visibility into the performance of those elements, those backend components, uh, to actually uh, understand how they are impacting the end user experience and activity in the environment. Um, so with that, I was just gonna walk through a couple of sample reports to talk about um, you know, exactly what some of these things look like right out of the box in the technology. Uh, so the first one is our very popular end user productivity report. Um, and as I mentioned, this is very, very heavily used by our customers to understand the new workspace that users are in and how that affects um, and how certain things like latency or, um, or poor performance can actually impact productivity. So if we look on this chart here, uh, on this uh, report, you can see the users on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, and we also have, of course, the details um, uh, of the user's performance, right, or, or the details of the particular user. So let's take, for instance, Randy at the top of the screen here. You can see how he's connecting into the environment, what his client IP address is, uh, you know, his, the state of his session at the time that this report was run. Um, it tells you exactly, um, you know, when it started, when it ended, you know, duration of the session. These are certain things that, of course, you have access to, um, maybe in some other tools, um, or you might have to, you, you know, can dive in and look for these particular um, uh, metrics. Uh, but if we look here uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see some really core or really key metrics here. Uh, number one is going to be uh, interaction. So this is the amount of time that this user is actually spending creating ICA traffic inside of the session. So this isn't, you know, a, you know, 15 minute intervals, or it's not. It's completely different from the Windows metric um, that, you know, uh, tries to aggregate and make an estimation on this. This is actual ICA data being used inside of the session that we're tracking. Um, and then, of course, conversely, you have the inactivity time, which would be the time that the, this user is not doing that. Right, so that when they are inactive, they're not moving their mouse, they're not doing something inside of their Citrix session. Um, and then, of course, you have the interaction percentage showing you overall, based on the time frame of the session, uh, how active they are are in it. And then we have here our max inactivity time, which is the uh, maximum amount of time within the session that the user is actually creating ICA traffic. Um, uh, or excuse me, the maximum amount of time in the session uh, that the user is idle or the user isn't creating ICA traffic. So maybe they went to take lunch. Maybe um, they uh, were in, they didn't log out of their system and they were inactive for eight hours while they were sleeping. 
this gives you some additional insight into the productivity of that user session. Um, and then finally, we have the application section that's going to show you what applications you are actually using um, inside of that uh, particular uh, or within those sessions. Um, now, this has been, of course, very heavily used to understand, okay, are users working? But a lot of times, our customers will take this information and combine that with uh, the next report that we have here, which is the end user experience report, to understand how poor experience or how uh, user experience inside of the sessions are actually impacting productivity. So of course, here you can see the end user experience report that breaks down the applications that are being used for an individual user or groups of users um, in your environment. It shows whether they're having a good session, a poor session. It shows their logon duration, ICA latency, and also their connection speed. So you can tell what's actually impacting this user session at a higher level. And then we, we of course, have uh, uh, reports that break things down uh, deeper. So this is a logon duration specific report that breaks down, that tells you whether this is a reconnected session or uh, or an in initial logon. As Stacy mentioned before, a lot of our customers will leverage this to show um, that they are meeting those key uh, uh, performance uh, uh, metrics on, on you know, logon duration. So think log on, uh, they wanted logons to be about 30 seconds and reconnects to be 10 seconds. So this report will break it down for the users from a particular time period. Um, and, uh, and of course, you could then leverage, you know, aggregation tools or something like that to be able to, uh, to get averages and show um, the improvement uh, in the environment uh, from a logon perspective. But this report also breaks down the different stages of the process. So uh, being able to see things like uh, client validation and GPO times, logon scripts, profiles, um, so that IT can then determine which one of these sections uh, they're going to tackle next in order to deliver a better experience from a logon perspective for your users. And then, of course, being able to analyze um, and enhance the data that's coming right out of the technology. A lot of our customers will leverage uh, Power BI or Tableau, which we actually have um, views built into these platforms that can take the data directly from our technology and present them in a format like this, where you're able to see license usage per application, uh, uh, license usage per hour, um, license usage per business day. So you can track some of these things um, in the environment, especially as you know more and more users are, um, uh, are having to leverage Citrix and VMware Horizon um, to do their day-to-day uh, their -day activities. A lot of our customers like to have, uh, like to you know, have a lot of licenses free. Uh, others would, you know, they're, uh, they try to try to stay as close as possible to that limit. Uh, but having reports like this, you can run on demand or on a scheduled basis, allows you to track that uh, much much easily, uh, much easier. Um, and then of course you have um, reports like user experience reports. Uh, breaking down logon times per day, per application, uh, per hour, but still giving you the details into the different stages of the logon process, um, if you see there at the top of the screen. So you actually have the ability to make correlations and uh, come up and make business decisions based on the data that we're collecting here in the technology. Um, I wanted to point out one more thing as well. A lot of these were very focused on Citrix, but we do have a number of different reports for VMware Horizon as well, that break down the user experience, the performance, logon duration, the activity, so on and so forth. Um, and before I pass it back to Stacy to talk about some of our client achievement stories, I wanted to show you really quickly how easy it is to set these up within the technology. So I'm gonna jump right over into our reports tab in the technology. Uh, and it's very, very simple, right? You can see here at the top of the screen, um, or you know, you can see here in the middle of the screen all of the reports that are have been scheduled to run in the environment. You can see which ones are scheduled, which ones are suspended. Um, if I wanted to uh, run one, you know, right on demand instead of you know waiting till the schedule, I can do so. I can view all of the historical reports that have been run for that particular report. So here you can see the um, Zen Desktop or Citrix Virtual Desktop. Um, uh, ICA latency reports. Uh, if I wanted to create a report, let's take for instance the popular end user productivity report, I can just run report here 
select whether it's virtual desktops or virtual apps, uh, select the type of report, and then go through a quick configuration wizard, uh, select all the machines in the environment, um, and once I'm done naming it, hit next and um, and it's all set. So it's really, really simple and really easy to set these up. Um, and it's really easy to manage, assign them to users, so on and so forth. So uh, with that, I'm going to pass it back over to Stacy, and she can go into some of our client success stories. So Yemi, you're not off the hook yet. Um, this comes from Brett, and he said we could wait till the end, but I think this is a great time to ask this one. He asks, can you compare user productivity and performance when people are working at the home office versus when they're working inside the office on a company desktop? They use published Zen app desktops for all user activity, whether they're working from home or in the office. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I know that there's, uh, those, are, those are things that I think we, we uh, Stacy and I hear almost on a daily basis, right? Because it's important to understand, um, I think we did this for a, a health system, right? Where we, uh, we, we put together a report that showed um, or we just collected information and, and they were able to put together in a presentation that di showed the difference between log on times for internal se sessions where, you know, where everything is being controlled by IT and then log on times for external sessions where, you know, there are elements that IT can't control, like a user's home network and how many people they have on their network, right? So you can absolutely run reports, you know, spec specifying, you know, how the users are connecting into the environment. Um, and then um, compare those um, in, 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 uh, and use the information to, to come up with a comparison as to, uh, uh, you know, the difference between working internally um, in, in, in the IT infrastructure and um, logging in externally with who knows what sort of connection these users have. Yeah, and just to emphasize, Yemi, because he and I worked on a project helping a, a customer out together on this that same user could have been in the hospital during the day and then working from home in a different session in the evening and we can filter those out right so we're not necessarily looking at a user we're definitely looking at a session level and can filter and report those and and draw up comparisons which is great when you can export the data which is what we did to show them some of the comparisons that are possible all right all right, Yami, if you want to jump in. So one of the things that I often like to highlight, right, is how do clients actually take what we just showed you and put it into practice? So here's our first one. Uh, we actually have a user story on our website from Empire Office. And we started working with them right as COVID hit. So they were in downtown Manhattan. They had three floors of office space. And they really, you know, they trusted their employees, but they were family owned. They've been in business for a while now but they really wanted to know our employees aren't used to working from home. They typically are inside the office. A lot of their designers, um, they sell um, office furniture for large environments um, or, or uh, offices. I'm saying environments, I think in IT there. Um, and so they have a lot of these designers that are working with design software. They're typically collaborating around the conference room and they're going, is this software going to work when they're accessing it remotely? What is the experience going to be? How are they going to be able to work together? Are they using some of the applications that we have there to collaborate? And so they really put this in place to see what's happening. And I'd say when we first talked with them with the pandemic, what they found was startling. They found that their employees were working more hours. They were starting earlier. They were ending earlier. Um, they also did see that many were kind of taking a break midday. They were assuming that they were actually helping them with their kids with homework. But then they saw again that they were working till 11 or 12. And so actually they got their HR department involved going, we can't have people burning at all hours trying to support you know, what they need to accomplish at work plus the family dynamic, right? And so this spurred a number of great conversations around what does the workday look like now that everyone's working at home and the conditions that they have? And so this became a very kind of global across management discussions, all rooted in data. No one was making an assumption, right? That maybe people weren't working as hard or they were working this way, right? They were able to identify exactly how people were working, when they were working, when they were most productive, and they were able to adjust and work and build programs in order to support their users. And Yemi, if you go to the next screen, it just shows again, a sample of that productivity report. 
Um, in their use case too, they were able to go ahead and they actually exported this data. We talked about combining it. They exported this data and they combined it with some of their Active Directory information. They were able to run reports and see, you know, their back office was highly productive at home, right? The designer team, right? That team was struggling more to be as productive because they were used to having greater collaboration. So they were able to analyze this data at many different levels and really come up with an analysis on what is that level of productivity and experience while everyone's working from home. Now, Yemi, kind of going to the next use case, and it's actually uh, the one we were talking about, right? Um, the reason that Yemi and I were helping run these reports with this health system is they really wanted to show that it was not an infrastructure problem that people were having slow performance while working from home. It had nothing that, that weren't set up correctly, right? Unfortunately, we talked early on, there's a lot of dynamics that go into that user experience. And so when people work from home, they expect the same experience. I don't have to tell everyone on the line this, but reality is they don't have the same quality of ISP. They might not even be using the best endpoint. Um, I heard stories with our clients where everyone went home and people were pulling out old laptops that were 10 years old trying to run Citrix on it, right? And then they also, Yemi, you hinted at this, they had multiple people working from home leveraging bandwidth. So both, you know, in some households, you had two people that were working, you had two to three kids that were doing Zoom meetings for school. That's consuming a lot of bandwidth. And so you try to then do a Teams meeting or a video call over voice over IP, you simply might not have enough bandwidth. And so this um, hospital specifically, they wanted to one, be able to identify exactly what was the overall experience for people working from home versus inside the hospital. And then they wanted to be able to isolate root cause when people did have problems, because not everyone was having a problem. It was a handful of people and they did want to help them. They wanted to help identify exactly what permanent fix solutions could be in place to make sure that their experience was good working from home, that they weren't dropping telehealth calls because they had increased the number of those that were happening at the house. So Yemi, do you want to talk a little bit about our software that allows them to really see and isolate both real-time and historical sessions when problems do arise? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so let's say, for instance, or we take this particular example here, um, someone's calling in complaining about slowness or issues inside of their Citrix session. Well, the first place that our um, customers would head over to is this view. This is the Citrix virtual apps and desktop session display. And this is where all of those sessions in the environment would automatically populate. So this is where you'll see, um, you know, current sessions, historic sessions. Um, we don't average or roll up any information we collect. So, you know, going back to the question that was asked earlier, a lot of times customers would actually to try to isolate, you know, what's actually the problem for an individual user. They can go back and pull this user's, all of this user's sessions for the past, you know, two months or three months, right? Depending on how long they choose to keep the data for and get the same amount of granularity in those sessions so they can drill in and understand why a user is having an issue today that they weren't having a week ago or a month ago. Um, but of course you can move tabs around here. It's, very, it's got an element of personalization. As I mentioned before, you can go back and pull historic sessions. Here I'm looking at sessions for the past three months. And once I've isolated the session that I want to drill into, I can then click down on the session. And now I have seven tabs as showing a, a pop up here of seven tabs that breaks down everything that went into this user's um, performance. Um, everything from their logon performance to their ICA performance within their to their uh, uh, the server that was supporting the session to the hypervisor host to down to the processes that were running on this on that machine. Um, and how much resources they were taking. We even have here alerts and event logs so that if there's any issue that takes place, I'm able to come up with an answer. But in this particular customer's case, they didn't even have to leave this screen here. The summary tab pulls in detailed information about the particular user session, um, but it pulls in those key metrics um, from each one of these different tabs. So you can see here all of the elements at the top of the screen that impacted this particular user session from their endpoint machine? Is it a, you know, is it their MacBook, like in this case, or if it's, you know, a, a thin client that they were leveraging uh, from internally inside of the office um, or or health system in that case, uh, you can see a high level breakdown of the logon process. And specifically here, 
key performance metrics on the performance of the user session. So you can see their round trip time, determine whether or not this user is or isn't having a problem. You can then see their network latency, which shows you whether or not, okay, if they are having a problem, is it due to poor network performance? And this isn't an ICMP or ping-based um, you know, network latency metric. It's actually a metric that we're getting from the ICA protocol itself. We're extracting out the real-time network performance of this user session and presenting it here because the ICA protocols are automatically always sort of collecting this sort of information. This tells you definitively if there's a network problem. So for these users, they were seeing a lot of network latency inside of their sessions. Now, network latency gets us very close, right? Because it, it tells us that it's nothing that has nothing to do with the backend infrastructure, the Zen app server or the hypervisor host. Um, but then how do we get answers, right? What part of the network is driving this poor performance? That's when we can look here at connection speed. And this is the amount of bandwidth available for workspace app or Citrix receiver at the endpoint location. So wherever this user is located, whether it's their home office, whether it's you know an office location, a, a mobile hotspot or something like that, this tells you essentially what is the download speed at that location? How much bandwidth do they have for this particular session? So in this health systems case, what they were finding is that every time they saw high network latency and poor round trip time uh, performance, those users always had really bad connection speed, you know, two megabits per second, three megabits per second. This was the type of information that they used to have conversations with the end users. Hey, it looks like your connection speed dropped at 3 p.m. What's happening at your location? That's when the user says, hey, you know, my kids get back from school or, um, or, or things like, you know, everyone got on the network because, you know, they're, uh, um, they're getting on Zoom calls or, and things like that. Or maybe I've walked over to the other side of the, of, the, of the house and I'm now further away from the router. But this is sort of the information that is needed to essentially have those productive conversations um, with end users. And of course, you have the ability to document this information and point to this as being the root cause of any performance issues um, that you're having within your session. And of course, you're able to do that, again, without drilling into all of these other tabs um, uh, to get more information. A lot of it will be presented here. Now, if you do have to, you have those tabs to do so. But um, in a lot of cases, especially when you're talking about poor network performance due to home user Wi-Fi issues, a lot of times you're able to get to those answers in a couple of clicks. Um, so with that, I think I'm gonna pass it back over to Stacy, um, and then we can get into, uh, into the um, uh, questions. Yes. Thank you, Yemi. And we do have quite a few questions that have come in. So if you have others, please go ahead and submit them in the Q&A box. One question we often do get is, well, how much effort does it take to get up and running? Well, as we mentioned early on, we have embedded intelligence and automation, which allows you to get up and running very quickly. You do not have to be an expert in any of these systems, nor even an expert in Goliath. So we offer turnkey uh, service solution that can really get you up in less than two hours. Yemi's done this quite a bit for our clients, which really allows you to leverage many of the out-of-the-box reports you just saw, out-of-box alerts. We might tune them to fit your environment. We talked about identifying if you just want home users or not home users, right? But the key here is really because of that embedded intelligence and automation, this is not adding more work to your plate. It's actually giving you full-time full troubleshooting experts augmenting them to your staff. So with that, let's go ahead and get to the question. Um, Yemi, first one comes from Dylan. How do you alert on issues to IT? How do we alert on issues? Um, yeah, so of course, you know, our technology is, you know, sort of set up and stocked with um, embedded intelligence where we're looking for conditions, failure points, thresholds, alerts can be sent out via email um, integrated into um, into uh, you know ticketing solutions um, uh, and uh, and things like that as well we you know text messages um, so a lot of those things you know we, we, we were able to, to you know automatically look for conditions failure points thresholds um, and events and then send them out to IT 
um, um, of course, you know, in, in any of the different avenues uh, that um, that uh, uh, is sort of present in that uh, in that organization. Um, of course, we also have technology that is able to anticipate issues um, that might not present specifically in um, you know in uh, with you know thresholds or inside of a user session. So, for instance, if a user doesn't have the ability to log in or access the Citrix environment. Um, actually, I, I can actually show that technology here, right? We have, you know, it's a technology that is automatically going to log on and launch applications and desktops on a scheduled basis. Um, and uh, it's typically deployed in this fashion where you have, uh, you know, a, a lightweight piece of technology at a particular location, logging on and launching the applications, right? You can see here, testing, you know, essentially all of the delivery elements that go into uh, delivering a Citrix or, or VMware Horizon session to a user. Um, and of course, because this is running 24 by seven, this allows IT to get ahead of issues that could impact users' ability to access the environment before users actually start calling in. Um, so, you know, let's say for instance, there's a failure and, um, you know, and uh, uh, an application isn't launching. This technology, let's say, catches it, let's say two in the morning. Um, IT now gets a real-time alert, and they can then analyze the launches from the technology as well. So there's an application availability section. If you head over to the analysis tab, you can see a dashboard of all of the launches taking place across the entire environment here at the top of the screen, with the blue bars here representing the launch times, and then of course the the yellow trend line here at the top of the screen representing overall availability uh, and then of course if you wanted to analyze individual launches you can look here at the bottom of the screen where you could see all of the launches taking place right the date and time the applications or desktops that were being launched where they were being launched from and ultimately whether those launches were successful or if they failed and if they did fail like for instance i, I see a failure here you can actually click here on this magnifying glass icon and this is going to show you essentially each stage of the process um, up until the error message that would present or the screens of and logs of um, the failure that took place. So we can confirm that that failure took place. You can see exactly what would present to users. So you could go ahead and solve that before users are actually impacted. And I know a lot of our health systems, um, a lot of our you know customers deploy this because of the ability to remove users as being the, the alerting um, um, avenue um, and uh, sort of resulting in, 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 the, in the ability to eliminate these sort of issues from impacting users. Hopefully that uh, answered the question. I know that was kind of a long answer, but uh, hopefully that answers it. No, yummy. Well, I like it. I always like when you take the opportunity to showcase a little bit more. Um, next question actually comes from uh, Jocelyn and she says they use Avanti's environment management tool. They're, she's curious to know what metrics do you do we show around logons? Sure, yeah, that's a it's another opportunity to maybe jump right into the technology. So um, yeah, when it comes to the logon process, you know, I, I think what you'll find is that, you know, when it comes to the amount of detail that we present in the technology, um, you won't be able to find any other tools that, that do so. Um, so let's jump back over to that session display, right? Um, where we had isolated an individual user session. You know, of course we drilled into their performance, but we have a dedicated logon duration tab here. So as I click here, I now have details on every single thing that impacted this user's logon. So if I look at the top of the screen, I have a breakdown of what's happening during the brokering stages of the process. So what's happening on the left-hand side in the, at the delivery controller or essentially inside of your data center where you can see things like logon scripts, uh, drive mapping, printer mapping, session creation or session load time. Um, you can also see what's happening on the right-hand side at the user's location. So without deploying any technology to the endpoint machines or the thin clients that the users are leveraging to access the environment, you're able to see things like how long the ICA file download took, or how long it took to establish the micro VPN connection, how long it took for those startup processes to take place at you know, the workspace app or Citrix receiver. So if you're seeing issues with 
with brokering or delays in brokering, you can specifically pinpoint exactly where the slowness is coming from. And then, of course, at the bottom of the screen, we have a detailed timeline of the entire logon process um, where you can expand certain sections depending on what you have uh, configured. So here, you can expand authentication and you can see what OUs this user is a part of, uh, what domain controllers are in charge of authenticating the sessions. Um, you can see, of course, um, how long it took for those LDAP calls to take place. And then, of course, drilling into group policies, you can actually see each individual group policy that affected this user session down to the policy name and how long each one took to execute. So you can essentially collapse the troubleshooting timeframe and focus on those individual pieces or processes that are uh, negatively impacting the user sessions from a logon perspective, as opposed to going through different tools and consoles and areas inside of your inside of your environment to try and get this sort of information. Hopefully that uh, that answers that question. Excellent. All right. Next question comes from Santosh. Is there a view where I can see the health of my Citrix infrastructure? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and that's an, another thing that I, we can jump into the technology to, to take a quick look at. Um, yeah, so we have what we call our automatic discovery and dependency map view for Citrix. Um, and as the name implies, this will automatically discover your Citrix environment, map it out. Um, it will then apply over 250 monitoring rules to the environment, monitoring for conditions, failure points, thresholds, and events that can cause end user experience issues. And these sort of monitoring rules then drive this screen here, giving it the sort of knock capability. Excuse me, because as issues arise, as issues take place on these components, they start to turn red or orange depending on the severity. You could then click on the components and you can then see on the right hand side of the screen, you know, resource utilization, context specific health checks based on the role of the component in the environment. Um, and then, of course, any alerts that are driving the poor performance. So this is a very heavily used knock view because of its capabilities, because you're in, at a glance being able to determine where slowness or issues are taking place in your environment. Um, but this is also a very, very effective troubleshooting style because if you drill over into the delivery layer here at the top of the screen, you now get, you, you go over, you switch from a physical view to a logical view of the environment where you're able to see your delivery groups, machine catalogs, gold images, if those are available. And you can actually click down on a specific delivery group where it builds out a machine infrastructure that then shows you the performance of that delivery group here on the right-hand side of the screen, so resource utilization, ICA latency, logon duration, um, but then allows you to tie those user experience metrics down to the machine catalog, hypervisor cluster, or even the individual hypervisor hosts that are supporting this particular delivery group. So essentially, what you're able to do is understand what is the round trip time for all of the users that are on a particular host? Am I seeing storage latency issues that are then causing poor performance? Or is my machine catalogs running out of memory? Um, and that's actually what's causing our, our uh, log on durations to be uh, to be high. This allows you to, to, to number one, get a real-time live updating view of performance, uh, but number two, understand if there are any macro issues that could be affecting multiple issues and multiple users due to, you know, or bottlenecking performance in your environment as a whole. Hopefully that uh, adds some additional context and um, answers that question. Perfect. And Jocelyn has come back and had a follow-up question. She'd like to know, how are you different from Citrix Director? Yeah, that's a good question. I think we, we normally get that a lot. Um, you know, how are you different from any of the three or, uh, uh, you know, the utilities that come with the technology? Um, and, and the Director one's very interesting as well because I think we have a, a, a diagram or a chart here that illustrates that. Um, so if you look here on the screen, if you look in the middle of the screen, essentially, um, all of the components that are not red is uh, is what director or any of the free utilities are going to uh, monitor. And they do a really good job of monitoring, essentially, those technology core components, right? 
Um, however, as we all know, when you're delivering a, a, a technology like Citrix or VMware Horizon, there are a number of other elements outside of that that impact performance that you're gonna have to get visibility into. Um, so everything here on the screen is what we're going to monitor at Goliath. We're not only just gonna monitor him, but we're gonna collect deep metrics on each one of these components, as well as um, keep them historically as well. So those are the two major things, is the broad and deep visibility, number one, and the historical data and retentions, so that if there's an issue that comes up, in anything that impacts the user experience, we're able to determine it, we're able to show you exactly where those issues are, um, and then we're able to document all of this historically so that you have data to make permanent fix actions and eliminate issues from the environment as a whole. Great, and we have one more question unless someone has a follow-up, so please do get it in. The last question, Yemi comes in and asks, actually two parts. One, is this agent-based technology? And second, is we use hosted Cerner, does it work in a hosted environment? Yes, absolutely, yeah. And I'll start with the first part. Um, yeah, there, there, uh, we have a number of different ways that we collect information. Um, we have, uh, number one, of course, is agent-based. We have a lightweight, intelligent agent uh, that is, uh, you know, takes up 0.1% of its CPU core, it's about a meg and a half in size, uh, but it really enables us to get a lot of deep metrics that are needed for troubleshooting. And, you know, talking about the agent, this is the only agent, uh, only sort of monitoring technology that's actually deployed in Cerner's remote hosted um, uh, facility, so uh, in Kansas City. So essentially, if you do have Cerner environment, you can deploy our technology in Cerner as well as on premises to be able to determine where in the sort of uh, uh, structure or the infrastructure uh, that you're having slowness or, or issues. And actually Cerner actually resells our product as well. So uh, we have a, a not only a technical partnership with them, but uh, uh, also uh, a business partnership. So with Cerner to, to you know, explicitly answer the, the second portion, um, you know, and if you do have a Cerner remote hosted app, um, you know, solution, uh, this technology absolutely will help get visibility into anything that impacts the user experience. All right. Well, oh, let's see. We have a hand raised. It might be by accident, but Kim, if you have a question, can you type it in? Could be by accident. Uh, sometimes the hand raises happen. Um, while I wait to see if, if we get the question that comes in, if you do have other questions and we have not responded to you here, please email techinfo at Goliath Technologies. We are happy to respond to any questions that you might have. And then also, if you are looking for a free trial, we, as we said, this is very lightweight, specifically if you're looking for that end user productivity report, this is something that you can run in your environment for 30 days, see what reports you're able to extract. You saw how easy it is to go ahead and deploy from Yummy. Um, email again, techinfo at goliathtechnologies.com and we will do that. And it might've been an accidental hand raise. So Kim, if it wasn't, email us and we'll get back to you. Well, Yemi, thank you very much for joining us here on this webinar. And I'd like to thank everyone that joined today. Please have a very safe rest of the year as we wrap up. All right, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.